Hi there everyone, today we have another fantastic science object. We're going to show you this object, we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk a bit of science, mm -hmm. talk a bit of history, and then at the end we're going to show you perhaps the saddest object you've ever seen on objectivity. But before we end on a downer, let's start on a high. I'm with Keith Moore, mm -hmm. head librarian at the Royal Society, and we have here a, I've seen it called a microscope comparator. I've seen it called just like a mini telescope. Small telescope, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, if I look through it, it does act like a telescope. I see things kind of zoomed in, upside down, of course. And we're talking about a guy called Henry Cater. That's right, yeah. Cater, we've come across before, I think, when we talked about the standard yard a little while ago. He's an instrument and measurement specialist, but he's fascinated by pendulums. And this object here is all about observing pendulums. But uh, you can use a pendulum to, to measure minute variations in gravity across the Earth's field. So it was a big push for Victorian science to get out there and do pendulums. So we have this paper here which is called An Account of Experiments for Determining the Variation in Length of the Pendulum Vibrating Seconds at the Principal Stations of the Trigonometrical Survey of Great Britain. Snappy. Not the shortest <laughs> title. 1819. And the paper starts off very much talking about weights, lengths and measures. And that's because a lot of this stuff to do with pendulum also relates to our good friend, the yard. The standard yard, yes. Yeah. So they wanted to, to have the precise measurement of the yard. Uh, and this is one of the ways they do it. But they had to begin by precisely measuring what a pendulum looked like, what the weight of it was, what the length of it was. They had to standardise that first. And Cater's paper begins with a little bit of that story. OK, so in case you're wondering, the basic setup is, and we'll go into this again in a minute, is you're basically setting off a pendulum going back and forward in front of a clock for timing reasons. And by looking at this, you're able to measure variations in the way the pendulum is swinging and therefore the effect that the local gravity is having on the pendulum. And in case you're wondering what this has to do with yards, the Royal Society back in the day was pushing quite hard from what I read to have the yard defined as the length of a pendulum that goes back and forth in two seconds. They wanted the yard to be defined in this way. They were unsuccessful in this case. Well, you can't do anything in science unless you have a standardised form of measurement. So they were very, very keen on this. OK, so we have this. We have a paper here by Cater himself who developed it talking about it. And he's using it in Great Britain. But it did go further afield because you've got another paper here, yeah. haven't you, Keith? So this is just a couple of years after Cater's paper where they're conducting observations for ascertaining the length of the pendulum at Madras in the East Indies. So this is out in India. John Goldingham has got the job. He's a fellow of the Royal Society. And rather marvellously, he shows you what's going on. Here, we've got an image of people working in Madras. He still yeah. does have the tables and the tables. Scientist, yeah. But this is what we like. Look at this picture here. We can see the pendulum set up with a pendulum affixed to the wall, and it's hanging in front of the clock with little calibration markings behind it. And here we see who I assume is Goldingham himself mm -hmm. sitting on a little stool using one of these. Exactly this. And we, we need to get you in exactly that pose, Brady. So this is what we in the trade we call doing a Goldingham. <laughs> he was looking at a pendulum and a clock. I'm looking at James on the camera. Do I look the part? I, I think a, a frock coat would be better than an objectivity t-shirt, but nice try. Nice plug for the objectivity yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that picture is great, but there's one thing I don't like about that picture. It's black and white. Would you like a colour one? We just happen to have it. This is the original watercolour that went to the printer. Have a look at that. Obviously got his assistants helping him out there. Is this the instrument he's using? Is this the one he borrowed from the Royal Society to do the work? Is that the same one? We don't know for sure. It's very, very similar looking at the picture there, but we, we don't know for certain. And these are pretty standard instruments, so it's, it's difficult to tell. I don't think there's even a maker's name on that. I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> now we're going to go downstairs because there's a couple more things we want to show you. So now we've come down to the reading room here at the Royal Society Library. This is an object you've seen before. This is Captain Cook's clock. Yes, it's one of the instruments he used, yep. So you can go and watch our previous video about that. But what we want to draw your attention to today is something we didn't really look at very closely last time. And it's down the bottom here. Keith, this is a bit of a modification that you find interesting. Do you want to come well, and tell well, us what's going right. on? You can see pretty clearly this 
would have been originally a full wooden door panel, but the panel has been cut in half and a piece of glass has been put in there because they wanted to observe the pendulum. So they wanted to do these sort of cater style observations using this clock at some point. That's right, and we know it was used in that way, and presumably sometime in its history, and possibly then, this is when the panel was removed. There seems to be a little observation dot here in the glass as well, so I think that must date from that period. I tell you what, Keith, do you know what I want to do? I want to use the cater thing on it. That's alright with you, Laura? I'll just be a second. There we go, you're alright. There we go. Look at that, I'm observing a pendulum with it. It's kind of a bit out of focus and I'm not really doing very much, but I can say I did it. Yeah. But at the start we promised you perhaps the saddest object you've seen on objectivity and it is contained in this box. Here we have a giant manuscript with a cover letter on the front. It's written by Colonel John Herschel who was one of those figures who produced voluminous numbers of pendulum observations in the 19th century. This isn't like the John Herschel everyone's heard of, this is... No, this is a family member but it's not, not, not John Frederick William, this is Colonel John who uh, w was one of the sons. So he's writing this history of the great pendulum observations of the Victorian period and he has to put it down, he gets another job, the manuscript eventually comes to the Royal Society, he donates it in the hope that someone will maybe eventually read it. And what does it say down the bottom of this page? So it says, and this is, is quite uh, poignant, I think. It is a matter of deep regret to me that the fruits of so much laborious and often tedious research and study must now leave my hands in an almost useless condition, to remain henceforth practically unavailable, and to all intents the same as non-existent, a type of abortive labour in industry without result. All right, well, for the sake of anyone who's ever written their great novel and never had it published, or written a huge scientific paper about pendulums and not had it published, let's get this manuscript out and give it a quick airing all these years later. Yep, I think we should. Here's the front. Review of observations made with pendulums for the determination of the force and variation of gravity and of discussions of the figure of the Earth founded upon them. And so it begins this epic discussion, the history of pendulums, the exhaustive history of pendulums, page after page after page, lovingly written by Herschel. It ended up in a box on a shelf. I mean, it does seem a bit of a waste. Why wouldn't this have been published, Keith? Well, it's not quite finished. And what market might there be for history of pendulums? It's good to have a definitive history of anything, and this might well have been it, but it just never quite made it. So Keith is saying there is no market for a history of pendulums and you just watched a whole YouTube video about it. Mm. We've got something extra special here, haven't we, Keith? What have you got yep. over here? Look at well, this. this is the key thing. This is the original. Yes. In colour. So this is the watercolour, which eventually formed that plate in the philosophical transactions. So it's really a big thing. Look at this. This is history in our hands here. That's the first proper glimpse the whole world was getting at these teeth. 